Today, we're in the middle of the Nevada desert, visiting a spot that Las Vegas owes its existence to. Hey everyone, welcome to Sidetrack Adventures, this is Steve. Right now I'm in the middle of the Nevada desert, about 20 miles south of Las Vegas. And I think most people probably know about the golden spike that was put in when the Transcontinental Railroad was completed. But near here in 1905, there was a lesser known last spike that received far less fanfare. But without it, there probably wouldn't be a Las Vegas, at least not as we know it. There's a historical marker here for the last spike, but we'll come back to this in a minute. I want to cross the road and get a little closer to the tracks first. This road is actually Las Vegas Boulevard, the same road that eventually becomes the Las Vegas Strip. It used to be part of Highway 91, which was the main road from Southern California to Vegas, until Interstate 15 replaced it. And those trucks way off in the distance, that's Interstate 15. I'm heading over to the railroad tracks now, there's probably not much to see over here, but it doesn't hurt to check it out. To give something of a brief history, since the mid to late 1800s, people were interested in building a railroad from Salt Lake City to Los Angeles. The big obstacle was the Nevada desert here. There was virtually nothing here. It probably looked a lot like, like what we're seeing right now. The whole valley Las Vegas is in had maybe 20 people in it. By 1899, though, Union Pacific had laid track from Salt Lake City to the Nevada border. Then, in 1900, William Andrews Clark bought a struggling rail line in Los Angeles and decided he was going to extend that line to Salt Lake City. The two competing railroad lines fought for a bit, but called a truce in 1903 that allowed Clark to acquire all of the Union Pacific rail lines south of Salt Lake City in exchange for 50% ownership of his company. I guess aside from these piles of railroad ties, like I figured, there's not much to see over here. We are just across the street from the last spike historic marker though, but there's nothing to show for it. But there is a reason for that, so let's head back across the street real quick. Both the crew building east from Los Angeles and the crew building west from Salt Lake City continued construction and on January 30th, 1905, the two crews met near here and completed what was then known as the San Pedro, Los Angeles, and Salt Lake Railroad. So on the marker for the last spike here on the side of the road, there's one key phrase, near this site. Historians have done a lot of research to try to figure out where the last spike actually was put in and they've come to the conclusion it's about a mile north of here, and so that's where we're gonna head next. Across the road from where we are now is a pretty popular tourist destination in this area. It's called Seven Magic Mountains, and it's an art installation out here in the desert that a lot of people going to and from Las Vegas stop at. The reason there's a bit of a question about the last spike site is because it wasn't really treated as a big deal at the time. There was no golden spike ceremony like when the Transcontinental Railroad was completed, and the owners didn't even show up. There was only a small, informal ceremony. The Los Angeles Times did cover the railroad's completion though, so the event wasn't completely lost to history. At 3.15 in the afternoon, the last spike was driven and cheers went up from the two crews on both sides of the track. And that brings us to the creation of Las Vegas. Modern Las Vegas is of course what it is because of the casinos, but the railroad is why the city is there to start with. Having the railroad go through this barren desert, they needed a reliable water source. A woman named Helen Stewart owned an 1800 acre ranch in the Las Vegas Valley, and in 1902, William Andrews Clark purchased her land in order to get the water rights for his railroad. You can really see here what the desert eventually does to the wooden railroad ties.
And here we have another marker for the last spike. This one built to be visible from the train. The exact location of where the last spike went in isn't known, but this is thought to be pretty close. With the line opening in 1905, the railroad only needed a small portion of that land Clark had purchased in the Las Vegas Valley a few years earlier. In May of that year, the railroad auctioned off 110 acres of their land, land that would later become downtown Las Vegas, and the city was officially formed. A few years later in 1909, Clark County was created, named of course after railroad owner and Montana Senator William Andrews Clark. And with over 70% of the state's population living there, it is by far the most populated county in Nevada today. None of these railroad ties or spikes look to be original, so the real last spike is likely long gone, but maybe this one sticking up here can represent it. So that's our look at Nevada's last spike. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and we'll see you next week.